This is Mrs. Murphy and today we're going to learn about problem solving and debugging. We're going to learn about some of the types of problems that will occur and some of the things that you can do to fix the errors. Now if you refer back to the first computer bug, it was literally a bug. But since then, our bugs have become a little bit more refined. We have coding, logic, bad data bugs, compatibility, and architecture bugs. A coding bug is usually a misspelling in your code. You want to check the case, check the spelling, check how you spelled it elsewhere. Your program is not going to compile if you have some sort of coding bug in it. Your program will run if it has a logic bug, but you might have some unexpected results. A logic bug is just the error in the logic of your code. It can be as simple as adding where you intended to subtract. In this case, the code is dividing by zero. Num equals 100 divided by zero. This would actually crash the program. Now you could have a bad data bug. That's when the data type doesn't work for what it's needing to do. In this example, iTimer would not change values because the value sto it's stored as an int, yet if you look at what we're adding to it, it's, we're adding 0.5 to it. So since it's stored as an int and the decimal places are chopped off every time you add 0.5 to it, it keeps chopping back down to the original number. So that's an example of a bad data bug. Compatibility bugs occur when there, you have different platforms that you're programming for. Your project might work just fine on a PC, but it might behave a little differently on a Mac or an Android. It's becoming more and more common as there's more platforms that people are using for their apps. Architecture bugs, they're the least common type of bug to occur. Um, it's when there's a flaw in the operating system or in the compiler, the deba database that you're using. Now the best way to find these bugs is to use inductive reasoning, you know, the old scientific method. You gotta observe what's happening, create your theory, test your theory, repeat this process till your program works. Now when problems come up in your code, no doubt they will, you want to remain calm. You can't think rationally if you're upset or stressed, no matter what the situation is. Now in some larger problems, I've found that I'll be thinking about it all night long and I'm so stressed out about it and finally I give up, I'll go to bed and all of a sudden it'll come to me in, in, you know, after I've taken a break from it. I mean, just take time, think about it, sleep on it. Now I'm not saying that's the only solution. Taking a nap every time you have a logic bug is not going to work to solve the problem. It's only going to help you take a break from it to solve the problem. Another thing that helps you solve a problem is reading the manual. That's why they have it, even though most of us want to figure it out on our own. Uh, you can also do research to find the problem. Check the web, find another person that has that same error as you, or just even another person. Sometimes getting just a perspective on the problem kind of helps in solving it. I had a student once in one of my programming classes, and he'd ask for help. Uh, he would describe the problem to me, and then in doing so, he'd say, Oh, never mind, Mrs. Murphy, I figured it out. I started realizing this, so every time he'd ask for help, I would just sit down and I'd listen. And by the end of the year, he said, Oh, thanks, Mrs. Murphy, for all your help helping me find all these problems. And I just laughed, because I really didn't help, I just listened. Make it fail. Okay, this one seems counterintuitive into trying to make your problem fail. But sometimes as you're going through coding uh, and you find a bug and it's inconsistent, if you can make that bug fail, then you can figure out what's sol what the problem is. So trying to recreate the bug is also helpful. If you can recreate the bug, you can narrow down the source of the error. When you make a, your project fail, make sure that you make changes one at a time. Otherwise, you might fix the error and end up with a broken program. Make sure you look at the code that you're fixing and make sure it's really broken. Maybe it might just be something simple. It's like check the plug rather than changing the light bulb. Using good coding techniques is another way you can narrow down where your problems are in your code. If your code is easier to read, then it's easier to debug. You want to line up any closing braces with a line of code that opens them. And then anything inside the braces you want to indent so you can easily see what lines are contained with inside the if block or whatever block you're using. Another way you can narrow down the problem in your code is to use a breakpoint. What breakpoints are is you put in a, a location and you 
the program, the code will stop at that location and it will let you step through the code one line at a, co one line at a time so you can actually see what's going on. Document whatever you do to fix an error. From your documentation, you can start noticing patterns to solve bigger issues. Sometimes small changes might cause bigger problems, and if you know, and if you have it documented, you can kind of revert back to your, your previous. Once you've found the errors, you need to test to see if that actually fixes the problem. You want to test several values instead of saying, oh, it works, it's good. Um, try and make your test in your testing, try and make your project fail. That way, you know, if you can't make it fail, then it works. You also want to question the problem. Maybe that error is happening somewhere else in your code. You want to check for errors, try and figure out how to prevent similar bugs. Now these are only a few of the strategies that will help you in your problem solving. Uh, you'll discover your own strategies through a lot of practice and a lot of patience.